of this artist in my cart for like a year. But the artist is super, like I said, a little different than normal art <laughs> because he no doesn't. Such thing as normal art. No such thing as normal art, he says. I like it. Um, he doesn't use traditional materials. He's not going to be using a canvas. He's not using a paintbrush. He does a combination of sculpture and photography, but with all natural objects. So he's going out in nature and he's using what he finds there to create what can best be described as sculptures or installation pieces. And then he takes pictures of them and then he lets them do what nature does, you know, lets the tide roll in and wash it away. He lets the rain cover it. He lets the, the, you know, the leaves crumple up and die. And that's just kind of part of it. So the two terrible images that I was able to print off my black white printer, here's one. And this is all made of rocks of different color. He did not paint the rocks to be white or to be black or anything. He only used rocks that he found and he arranged them to create this and th this is normally in black and white. It's a it's a gray scale, so darker rocks going into really white rocks into the black center. So again, he's not painting them. He's not altering them in that way. He's using what he has. Sometimes his creations are really tiny, like created with blades of grass, literally that he's he's you know braiding together. And sometimes they're huge boulders, um, often with sticks. And what you're seeing there is. This is what he created, Looks the top like half in the water. So you're seeing the reflection as the bottom half of that. It looks like a what? A spider web, kind of. Spider web. Interesting. Um, so his works. What? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can ask that question in a second. So anybody know who our artist is before I go any further? What? It's not, a it's not a question. It's a statement. Anyone? You want to say it, Lou? Andy Goldsworthy. Andy Goldsworthy. He's worthy of gold. He is worthy of gold, says dude here. Andy Goldsworthy is our artist of the day. Born in 1956 and still alive and still working, creating awesome, awesome works of art. So how old is he today? 64. 65. Wait. Okay. <laughs> I should really do the math ahead of time so when he says it, I can say yeah. Um, still alive. He is a British artist, though he travels all over the world to create these, these works of art. Some of them are very site specific. They're intended for that location and they only work because of that location. And some of them could be created anywhere. Um, but yeah, he travels around. Okay, you can go get a drink of water. <laughs> um, he's be uh, it's best called, his art is most often referred to as land art or environmental art. And it's kind of a combination, like I said, of sculpture or installation art and then photography because he takes the pictures. And it always leaves you with the question of, is the art the sculpture or is the art the photograph he took of it? I don't know. The sculpture. You think it's the sculpture? What do you think, Goose? <laughs> Yeah, she hasn't been paying attention at all. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so again, land art or environmental art, is his art the sculpture or is it the photography? Sculpture. I don't know, as you look more at it, see what you think. Um, and again, with the sculpture, he is using found materials. When he's sticking leaves together, he's not using glue to do that. He's using pine needles as like a pin to stick them together. He's using sap. He's using spit and mud to, to get things together. He's not using uh, traditional materials that would help make it any easier. Um, he's using what he finds in nature. And I love this quote. I only was able to fit part of it on there. But he said, we often forget we that we are nature. Nature is not something separate from us. So when we say that we have lost our connection to nature, we've lost our connection to ourselves. And that's part of what he's he's doing in creating this land art is reconnecting to nature and trying to understand it better. And that's why he's OK with the fact that his art, you know, the leaves, they crumble and become earth again because that's part of nature. And he's learning about and playing with um, the fact that things always change. The world is always changing. Nature changes. You know, the, the colors 
change as, as we progress from summer till fall. Um, and then the, the leaves disintegrate and become ground and, and feed uh, the earth for the next, the next spring. And he's playing with that impermanence, that, that change that happens all the time in nature. And he's not trying to um, stop it. He's not trying to, you know, stand in a storm and put his arms out and stop the storm from coming because you can't. He's embracing that change and that um, fluidity of life and, and playing with it. So his works tend to include um, stones, like we saw this, this little piece with these little pebbles and then huge boulders. Like you'll see arches that were made out of huge boulders. Um, and sometimes, like I said, most of the time his works are really not uh, created to be permanent. Now he has in more recent years created very, very large pieces that are supposed to be permanent. There's a place, I think in England, I forget where, that he worked with a bunch of people to create a 150 kilometer hike and along the way, there are just dozens of pieces that he's created. But it's not like when you go into a museum and you're like, oh, here's one piece and here's one piece and here's one piece. And it's like you're binging on art. You're like trying to walk through the museum and you're, you almost become overstimulated. When I went to the Louvre in Paris, I like we wore out. After a couple of hours of looking at art, we were exhausted, which sounds really funny because all we were doing was looking at it. But our brains were overstimulated. And so this 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 park that he's created, this 150 kilometer long hike with art along it. Wait, how many miles is it? Yeah. Yeah, we'd have to do the conversion from kilometers to miles. 80 to 90. We'll work on that later. 80 to 90 miles. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, along that way, it's not like one piece, one piece, one piece. It's like, look at one of his sculptures and then walk for, you know, a hundred kilometers, not a hundred, walk for 20 kilometers. And then you see the next piece. So it gives you time to think about it, which is something like when you're out in nature, you have that time to just enjoy what you're seeing and walk and feel that peace. And he doesn't want to disrupt that with his art. So like I said, little stones, huge boulders, sometimes cut into. One of his pieces, imagine this, and we are providing links here because like I said, I don't have a lot of examples to show you. I just have these two images. Um, there have been two documentaries made on him and his creation of art, and we're providing links. Actually, Cooper, do you wanna, he's gonna put the links in the, the comments right now. So you can take a look at those. They're really, really interesting. I haven't actually seen the documentary, but I did see that it's available on Amazon. So I think that might be what I'm doing later today, which I'm kind of excited about. Um, Anyway, imagine one, one piece done many years ago on a hillside where there's lots of trees coming down to the water. And he made a stone fence that instead of being like a typical stone fence that would just go the most direct path, instead, this stone fence weaves in and out and in and out of the trees as it goes down into the water. I a like lot. What? I like this guy. You like this guy. Awesome. Um, and in the trailer to Rivers and Tides, um, it shows that he will spend hours and hours, like whole days creating a piece. And it's all about like the balance and the unsteadiness of it. And the whole thing will fall apart and he has to start over. And that's, you know, it's nature. It's change. It's life. Like sometimes we don't do it right the first time. We got to do it the second time. And it looks like, like in the video that you, you'll watch the link that's right there. Um, it all collapses and he's like, <sighs> And then he starts again. Um, it's just really, really, really cool. Just uh, trying to connect to nature and earth and calming down, not not worrying about so many things. Again, some of it's super, super small, made with blades of grass, super huge boulders, um, lots of sticks, lots of leaves. Some of his works are black and white, like this one is, even when it's not printed on a black and white printer. And then some has to do with color, where he's doing you know, really brilliant fall colors of leaves. Uh, one of my favorite pieces of his, you'll like this dude, right as it was about to start raining, he laid down on a huge boulder and laid there for the whole oh, rainstorm. And then as it stopped raining, he got up. And so what would be left on the boulder? <laughs> this, a um, rough uh, outline of him. Basically. Yeah, a person shape. Mm -hmm. of dry rock with everything else being soaking wet. And so yeah, took a picture, took pictures of it um, and then walked away. And did that mark stay there? 
No. No, no. As, it, as the rest of the rock dried out, the image disappeared and was just gone forever. Um, so those are a couple of examples of his works. Um, there are, he's made huge nests basically out of sticks um, that are, you know, standing up, which is just huge, huge, huge. Often it interacts with what's there, you know, is built into the side of a tree or a specific to a meadow. And sometimes um, it's not, it's a fashion show. We're definitely checking ourselves out here in the camera. <laughs> yes, Joe. Sure, go ahead and draw the whiteboard. So any questions about our artist, Andy Goldsworthy? Do you have any questions about him? She did ask earlier why he's so old. And you know, nature, that's what happens. <laughs> year after year, we just get a little older. Can't do anything about it. No use fighting it. Oh, you don't like that hair? Okay, we'll, we'll fix your ponytail later. Any questions? Does he have any gold? I do not know if he has any gold. <laughs> I know that um, he has kids that work with him in creating his art. That he has a daughter that graduated from art school and then came to work with him and help, help him produce stuff. And he had a younger son that I was reading an article when the son was seven that would go and help. Um, so very cool. Work together on stuff when they can. So please, when you get when we finish here, Click on the link and watch those videos and and Google Andy Goldsworthy and look at his pieces. They're just so cool. I don't know. They just they I, I love nature and nature is one way that I um, kind of refresh my soul. And so I don't know. His art just speaks to me being out in nature and, and creating these cool pieces as, you know, using nature to create nature pieces. Um, my art is yeah, my my art in a different way. I, I use traditional uh, materials, you know, paint, brush, watercolors and stuff. Um, but my art is kind of a love letter to nature, too, and a response to how I feel with nature. Um, so go ahead and click on those links afterwards. And our art project for today is getting outside. Go outside, take a walk, you know, social distance on your walk. Um, take a walk. And as you walk around and if you can walk around with some little people. If, if they live with you or FaceTime with grandkids or anything. And as you look around, some, cause sometimes kids are so much better at dreaming up crazy ideas. <laughs> cause sometimes our adult brains are like, no, 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 that's not possible. No, 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 that's not possible. As you walk around, talk about it. What, what could we use in what we're seeing to create something awesome? Look at the, look at the trees, look at the branches, look at the leaves, look at the petals, the bark, the grass, the flowers, the leaves. Did I say leaves? Uh, the water, whatever that you're looking at, and what could you uh, manipulate without destroying um, to create land art, to create natural or environmental art? So that's our challenge today. We're not obviously not going to do it right here. Go ahead and take a walk uh, by yourself or virtually FaceTiming children or with children. Take a walk and, and just come up with ideas, crazy ideas, ideas that you couldn't possibly do even. Come up with ideas. And then if you are if you have some ideas that aren't so crazy, maybe go ahead and do them. Make a mandala out of leaves on the ground, um, leaves and rocks and twigs and stuff. Um, and yeah, take a picture. Send it to me if you do. And and if you don't actually create it, that's fine too. Just just enjoy being out in nature, observing the, the way that nature interacts with you and you interact with nature and, and be creative and enjoy. We um, are not going to be doing a video tomorrow on Friday. We are actually participating um, in a, a fast that our church is doing um, to ease uh, a day of prayer and fasting to ease the suffering from like COVID-19 tomorrow. tomorrow. Um, and as part of that, I'm going to also be fasting from social media and, and screens and everything, um, as we try and just join together united in a worldwide, uh, day of prayer and fasting to get through this and, and get to return to more normal life and, um, and, and hopefully ease the suffering of those that are really, really being affected by this. So I hope you are safe and well and happy, happy creating, happy arting today. I always say happy arting. I always say happy arting. It's true. <laughs>